I've mentioned several times that one of the problems with redundancy is that it helps with hardware faults, but not necessarily with software faults. A way to deal with this is to segment the software into a high sill portion of the software and a low sill portion of the software. That reduces the total software development cost because now only some of the software needs to be high sill and the rest of it, assuming it's not safety critical, can be at a lower sill or perhaps not safety critical at all. There are a number of patterns for doing this, but let's start with the simplest, least expensive one that's suitable for low sill systems. The pattern is a same CPU doer checker pair, and it has the property that it mostly fails silent. So there's a single hardware CPU, and there's two partitions of software. The idea is that the SIL1 doer actually operates the system, while the SIL2 checker is in charge of safety. Assuming that there's adequate isolation between the doer and the checker, the checker can be responsible for all the safety functions, and the doer can do whatever it pleases so long as it doesn't interfere with the checker. The pro for this pattern is that if you have a safety critical RTOS, you might have enough doer checker isolation that this pattern gives you safety. And typically what you see is a checker at cell two and a doer at cell one. This pattern is permitted by IEC 6730 as long as you can argue adequate isolation between the doer and the checker. The benefit of this pattern is you can take credit for a higher sill checker and a lower sill doer and have system safety at sill two, even though the doer is sill one. There are some cons for this. First, it requires a doer checker isolation argument, just as we saw with the previous software isolation pattern, or alternately, the doer and the checker need to be at the same higher sill, which gets rid of a lot of the advantage of this approach. The biggest con is that this pattern is only useful for SIL 1 and 2 not life critical patterns. That's because a hardware fault can still cause an arbitrarily bad failure for the entire system. In other words, it fails active. If you need to use something higher than SIL 2, if you need to be life critical, then you need one of the more advanced patterns we'll talk about next.